everyone. In today's video, we are going to learn, or rather we are going to perform a lab. Through lab, we will learn about the pull request. We have already created two very small, simple labs to understand GRASP Azure DevOps or the repos of Azure, De Azure DevOps. And in this video, what we're gonna do, we are going to create a branch with the help of the uh, GUI, that is visual code. We still have the same repository that we have borrowed from the Microsoft, uh, not the repository, but the, yeah, yes, exactly the repository, but the code, I, I meant to say, I hope you get it. So uh, what we'll do, we'll create it, uh, create a branch with the help of uh, Visual Studio, uh, VS Code. Okay, and for this uh, lab, we should have this uh, Azure repos extension because you need to run some commands that can only be get through those extension, which is Azure repos extension. You go there and search Azure repos and you can uh, install those, this one, you can install it, Azure repos. This will help you to perform this lab. So what are the tasks that we are going to perform? Well, we are going to create a branch. We are going to publish it. Then we are going to make some changes and raise a pull request. Then we will we'll see the pull request in the Azure uh, uh, repos. We'll go check it out, attach some bug or work item which has a bug. Then we'll see how it reacts. And then we'll go ahead approve it by resolving those uh, comments or the bugs and then we'll merge it. We'll see uh, different other aspects of merging. Along with that, we'll see the different branch based policies that you can apply on your repository on your branch. We'll also see the settings of the repository, which will help us to make our uh, project secure and under the best practices. So let's get started. We have the same thing that we have been working in the previous videos. This is our uh, local repository on my virtual VM. Don't worry about the public IP because this VM is going to be shut down and it's a dynamic IP, so it's okay. Uh, more awarenesses are there, you know the drill. Anyway, so if you remember in the previous video, we also talked about how to create a branch. Simple, we, we are, if you see my mouse at the left bottom corner, it's a master. If I click here, I have all the options here to create branches, right? So uh, these are the old branches. We should, we should uh, uh, prune them. Uh, so let me quickly do that. Control, shift, and P. This will give us the palette and we need to delete. Okay, what happened? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, prune. Ah, uh, what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, it removed all that, all those branches. Reason being, I have already been, I have already deleted those branches from the Azure repos and I have showed you this in the previous video. I uh, just wanted to clean the slide before we start this particular lab so that we can only focus on this, not the leftovers. All right, so from now, as I said, the very first step we are going to do, we are going to create one branch. And before that, let me show you if I open the Azure repos, I go to the branches. Uh, we do not have any branch except master, which is our default, right? So let me go to the VS code and click on master, click on create new branch, and let me call it branch 01, enter. Now you can see at the bottom left corner, I'm on the branch 01, right? Now, what can I do? I can publish this branch to the Azure repo. And if I go here and see, I don't see anything like branch 01, but 
if I refresh it, you'll see branch zero one somewhere right here. Okay, it is there. All right, now we need to go back and uh, we have these two files open on which we can make some changes, right? So we can we can simply say under category CS change in feature instead of feature, let me call it uh, branch zero one. That's what our branch is. You can see right here. Now it says modified. You know the drill we have already covered in the previous video. We need to go to source control, add the command. Let me change it to branch zero one, just to keep the things very simple to understand the process. Let me uh, commit this. Now I can simply go ahead and sync it with the Azure repos in, in, the, in this branch only. So if I go right here under the branches, I have branch 01. And if I click on the branch 01, I go here under the source, under the modules, the files that I have changed category, even you saw it says just now, updated just now, and this is the change that I have done. But if I go into the master, the changes, the old one, change in feature, right? So if I merge it from the PR or the pull request, then our master branch will start showing what we are merging or approving in the whatever we have in the branch 01 or the uh, pull request all right so let's see how it works we go to uh, not here we'll we'll do things from here we'll raise a pull request from here right from our vs code so how are we going to raise a pull request it is very simple and here uh, you will need that I was talking about. This team, team uh, commands you will only get once you have that Azure repos extension. So I, I clicked on that and I am into my repos and I can create a pull request from here. One more thing, once you add your Azure repos, it will prompt somewhere down here to hook up your Azure uh, DevOps project with this VS code so that you can directly open the uh, portal. That's what it did. If you, if you see, I just clicked on the create pull request. It just opened the Azure repos where I clicked on the pull request. It can be easily done with the help of that extension that I was talking about. So once I click on the new pull request, we have to select the source branch and here we have only these branches are, are, are came with the uh, repo that I have borrowed from the Microsoft. So I just need to select the branch 01, which is my branch I've created with you guys. And we need to uh, branch into master. That's what we need to do. This is the title because this is what we mentioned in the commit. Now you can see, you can enter a lot of information in this uh, pull request. You can even link the work item. It supports the markdown and you can select the reviewers, right? Uh, let's link some work item here. If you have, let's hook this up with this pull request just for the understand, for the sake of understanding. And we can click on create. Now our pull request is created, right? You can also uh, go ahead here and uh, go back to this right here, which says, you see the main branch and you have raised one request, which it says pull request. That's why it's saying browse your pull request. If you click on it, it will grab the information. So branch zero one, that was our pull request. You can click on it and it will again, get us back to repos and this was our pull request right you can you can directly work from there and you can come through the vs code as well now you can see this is a very simple lab there is no merge conflict so we are good to merge but 
we need to practice. It's a lab for the understanding. So what all we can do, we can uh, click on the files and here you see uh, the master branch says feature, but we have done the change as branch 01 and we can write a comment here. Changes made to fix, just an example. And we, we, we can comment it. Now, whosoever is reviewing this, he, uh, he also needs to resolve the comment, okay? Uh, it's, he just not like directly go to approve and complete it. He will go through the comment. He will understand, for example, as per our comment, we, we, we are good. This will going to replace it and we are good. That's what the problem. Let's suppose, and we can click on resolve and it will resolve the comment and will be good to proceed with merge, right? So <clears throat> let's click on updates just to see what is there. This is only talking about the one commit that we made and on the commits, same thing, right? We can click here and go back to there. The only thing is uh, file, let's click on the resolve. Now this will, resolve the comment that we have made as you can see right here changes made by uh, ap that is me of course now we can see we can click on overview and click on work item because this has been resolved you can see here this has been resolved if i clicked on overview and this was the work item which was attached to this pr and it says approved now if i click on it on the on the work item uh, under uh, development you can see this branch 01 created three months ago and it says it's active because we have not yet merged it but our bug is uh, resolved so what we need to do now we simply need to go back under the pull request and where are the pull request under the repos uh, go back to the pull request this was the pull request and now we can simply approve it from here right and i think uh, this is we clicked on the resolve, yeah, it's a resolve already. And we clicked on approve, we clicked on approve. I think we did. And then we can click on complete. Now here you can see it will read the branch after merging. So that's okay with us. And it will complete associated work items after merging. If you remember, I clicked on the work item, it was showing active because it has not been merged yet. And you can choose the kind of merge type that you want. The squash will not have the history, only one commit. Rebase uh, source commit onto target and fast forward. And these are different kind of commits that you can choose. You can also apply the policy like it won't allow you to choose. There would be only one type of commit. We'll see the policies once I hit on the complete merge. So now this is merging. It's merging the pull request. Hopefully this would be successful because we kept it absolutely simple for the understanding purpose. And now you can see we have cherry pick and revert. We can revert the pull request and we can pick the particular commit from the pull request that can be done. Now, if I click on the uh, this work item again, uh, it should be good now. It says completed, that is automatic. Now let's click on the project settings and see the different properties or settings or security under repository. Under repos, click on the repository. Under repository, we have multiple tabs here. If you click on the settings, we can uh, allow users to manage the permission for their created branch, which is on. You can change those settings as per uh, your need requirement or your wish. Now, the default branch name for the new repository is main, you see, and in my particular repository, it's master, but you can change it. You can on and change the name. You can apply the policy. There are, there are multiple policies that you can choose, like 
commit author email, file path validation, uh, case enforcement, reserve names, maximum file size. There's so many policies that you can opt for. Under security, we have the RBAC who has the word permission kind of thing. And if you go back to the repository, you click on the repo and you can see, you can allow whether people can fork it or not. You can allow commit mention linking. This is the work item thing. You can allow permission management, those things. If you uh, <clears throat> click on policies right here, we have the different policies here, right? Which, which are exactly the same that we showed at the uh, repo level. But if you scroll a little further, you'll find their different branches. If you click on the master branch, you can apply different policies on the master. Like you should have the reviewer. You cannot go ahead and merge it directly, right? It is off right now. That's the only reason I could merge it directly, but you know, you can have those things. Uh, you can uh, make it mandatory, like link the work items, those things. You can have the build validation, like whatever PR you have raised, but you want uh, validate. You want to validate the code by pre-merging and building pull request changes. Those kind of can be those kind of things can be done with the help of project settings under repo policy. Uh, and that's that's all i think that's a very simple lab it is uh very complicated the devops thing it is actually very simple but the people like me who are coming from the infrastructure background it becomes a little complicated until you start connecting the dots so hopefully you are with me you're you're learning with me i'm learning with you and this simple lab will help you understand how to raise a pull request how to attach the work item how to resolve is comment it and remove and delete that we have already seen moreover if i click on the repos again if you click on the branches i hope you would not have the branch zero one I should not even hope I should know because when we were merging, it's the checkbox. There was a checkbox which was checked stating it will delete the branch, and that's what it did. So, thank you for watching. I hope this would be a learning experience for you guys. Let's meet in another video. Till then, take care. Bye bye.